You ask any professional painter what it takes to achieve that perfect mirror-like show quality finish, they're going to tell you it's all in the prep work. That's what the OptiFlow system allows you to achieve at home. The perfect foundation, saving you thousands. You just saved yourself a boatload of money at a body shop. The vehicle is now paint ready for a single stage, base clear, whatever you want. You're ready to take this to the next step. Mark Robito here. What you see behind me is a 1992 Camaro in primer. What if I told you we didn't spray that on, but we've rolled it on? Follow along to see how you too can achieve these professional results at home. So what is OptiFlow? Well, let me tell you. It's a two component epoxy and urethane priming system formulated to be roll applied to the vehicle. It's not for everybody. It's for the guy that doesn't own spray equipment, doesn't have the place, or doesn't want to spray the vehicle. It now gives him the option to achieve professional priming system on the vehicle. It's very easy to achieve these results. Now let me walk you through the steps. First step in the process is going to remove all your existing components. Bumpers, trim, door handles, mirrors, etc. Once you have that done, you want to strip the existing coating. Now there's options here. You can abrasive blast, chemical strip, or mechanical. We chose to go the mechanical route. We used our SCT and a DA with some abrasive paper on it to remove the existing coating. So once you've stripped the vehicle of the existing coating, go ahead and wipe it down with some pre or a high quality cleaner to remove any surface contaminants or grease or oils from your hands. Then we're going to move on, prep the door jams. This can easily be done with scotch Brite pads, scuff until you have no longer any gloss. If there's areas where there's chips, feather them out if you need to a little bit of filler and go ahead and apply two coats of the epoxy primer. This can actually has the activator inside of it, so you go ahead and you'll mix that, shake it, spray it just like an aerosol can. Go ahead and apply your two coats to each door jam. Once the door jams are complete, we're going to go ahead, apply one coat of epoxy as just a bare metal sealer, and then we're going to start the bodywork portion of this. Now the body work is going to take about 80% of your time during any paint job, whether it's this roll applied or a spray, but it's what's going to determine how nice that finish looks at the end of it. So go ahead, take the tack rag, wipe off your car, and go ahead and start doing the first coat of epoxy. Mixing instructions are right on the cans, very easy. These rollers are designed for these coatings here with this small 1 8 foam nap. What you want to do is what I call metering it out. Dip the roller into the tray and go ahead and do a couple rolls on some painter's paper. What that'll do is that'll wick the roller completely even. Now you can go ahead, pick up more, and start applying. Putting it on the car is no different than what you're doing on the wall. But the tip here is at the end, once you have the hood, door, or any section coated, come back and on your roller marks, just lightly drag the roller with no pressure on it other than its own weight right on those marks, and you'll see them just disappear. You want to wait about 15 minutes between coats or until the epoxy is no longer tacky. A trick I use is to take some painter's tape in an area like down on a windshield or maybe in a wheel well where you know you're going to come over a little bit on your roller. You can use that surface now to test for if it's tacky or it's not instead of actually touching your finish. In cooler temperatures, you may have to wait a little bit longer. Inevitably, there's going to be some areas where you just can't get with the roller. You can use the aerosol can for those areas or a small foam brush if it's real small dipped into your epoxy or your urethane will touch those areas up nice.
The next step is going to be very important to achieving a perfect level paint job. What we're going to do is apply our guide coat to the entire vehicle. And when you're using the aerosol guide coat, don't just sit there and fog it around like you see on a YouTube video. You want to have a uniform coating of black over that gray epoxy. Once that's completed, let it dry for about five minutes. Now we're going to cross block this, which is in a pattern of where you're sanding 45 degrees to each other. Start with your 220 grit on your block and continue to cross hatch the panel as you see me doing working this door here. What that's going to do is going to reveal your highs and lows. This is what you want to trust. Trust in the guide coat. Your hand will work if you've been doing this for 30 years. If you haven't, this is the best option here. What you can see here is any of your lows, you're going to have the black of the guide coat left in there. Any of your highs, you're either going to have the epoxy showing or you may even cut through, depending on the size of them, into the bare metal. Your highs, if you can tap them down with a body hammer, is great if you can reach the back with a dolly. Your lows, those are the areas that we're going to want to work with the filler to bring them up to meet your highs. Some tips when you're block sanding are this. Two very important ones. Whenever you have a body line or a style line that's a peak, you don't want to be sanding over that. Sand up to it in both directions like that. Another one is when you have an area that's very thin and narrow, like say an A-pillar coming down the side of a windshield. If you can't get your block on there to sit squarely, it'll just end up making grooves. There you can use your hand, but when you're going to sand with your hand, you want to take your fingers 45 degrees from the panel. Never sand linear with your fingers. That's what will dig those grooves in. So now you have the entire vehicle block sanded. Go ahead and wipe it off, blow it off, or use a tack rag. Let's see where we are. And again, trust in the guide coat. Carefully look at a panel. Don't look at the whole car as, oh, I have to body work this. Just break it up into the 10 panels that it is. So what you're going to see is you're going to see your dark areas, your guide coat, remaining in any of your lows. Any of your highs, if you can get to both sides of the panel, you can gently tap them down with a body hammer. But trust in this guide coat. This is the most important thing. The lows are where we want to apply our filler. The highs are where we're not going to worry about right now if we can't tap them down. We want to bring the whole surface up to one uniform level. So now we're getting ready to put some filler on here. We're using our Contour Premium Polyester Filler, which is a real nice high build, high adhesion filler. Here's a little tip. If you have a bunch of lows on your panel there, before you mix your filler, take some painter's tape, just a little piece, and put it by each of those areas. Now you go ahead and mix your filler and you can see exactly where you want to put that on. You're not chasing or looking as your filler's hardening on your palette. So now our filler has thoroughly hardened and we're going to go ahead and block sand it. Start with the 80 grit on the blocks and concentrate just on the areas where your filler is. What you want to do is get that into a uniform dull sheen. Now we'll come back, wipe off or blow off any of your dust and guide coat the entire panel again. Not just areas, but the entire panel. Now we're going to cross block again with our 120, 220, 320. In between each step of paper or grit, blow it off, guide coat again. This may seem like a lot of work, but I'll tell you, if you've ever seen a paint job looks great, six, seven months later, you see what the painters are called sanding scratches coming through. Well, it's not that they're coming through. It's that Heavier grit sanding scratches were never removed, and as the paint cures and hardens, it actually sinks into those valleys. The guide coat will show us that. Once you're done with your 120 grit, you'll see black streaks. That's the 80 grit. Now you know, continue sanding in that area with your 120 until you level it out. So continue to do that. Guide coat, progressively move up in grit. Don't cheat yourself. Don't go from a 120 to a 320 and think you're speeding things up. You'll never get out those scratches. Work through the system, trust the guide coat, you'll end up with a perfectly level surface. And remember, when we're standing up to our body or style lines, even with the filler on there, you don't want to go over them. You want to go up to them, top and bottom, and continue like that. So here we are. 
We're assured we finished our body work. That means we have a complete level surface. Now we have some cut throughs, which is fine. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply one seal coat of our epoxy over the entire vehicle. This will seal and protect the bare metal and get us a nice uniform surface before our urethane primer. So let's go ahead and do that. So once you finish with the epoxy, go ahead and clean up. You've done a lot so far. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let this cure for 24 hours before we go ahead and put our urethane primer on. So now we're gonna apply the urethane. We're gonna use the same application methods and techniques as we did with the epoxy. It's about the same viscosity, so it's gonna go on pretty much equivalent. You wanna put four coats on, waiting about 15 minutes between each coat or until no longer tacky. At this point, the four coats of urethane are cured, you're done, you did it. You just saved yourself a boatload of money at a body shop. The vehicle is now paint ready for a single stage, base clear, whatever you want. You don't look around, there's no overspray in your shop, there's no neighbors complaining about any smells or odors coming out of your garage. You're ready to take this to the next step. So for more information, some detailed how-to videos on the OptiFlow product, go to eastwood.com.